topic will focus one of the core area of chemistry in our college students of mathematics students of mathematics honors or students of bsc general course all must have to opt for chemistry as one of the subjects of their study either as generic elective or core course so we hope that our students for whom mainly this international webinar is arranged will be benefited yes they will be benefited positively from the talk of dr ashok das an eminent scholar and highly respected researcher yes we are sure that our students will be inspired and motivated to build up their sense of understanding in their academic career in this institution i would like to thank the joydev halla president of the college we get all help suggestion and cooperation from his end for arrangement of such academic programs dr nilima das or junior assistant professor of the department of mathematics is very sincere and dedicated she did take all initiative for arrangement of this international webinar she is a brilliant teacher na in the department of mathematics with a high standard of academic background i would like to thank dr nilima das subhajit kumar and saddam hussein are all young and bright teachers of the department of mathematics i thank them very sincerely thanks to rondini guho mm. she is with us mm. our nac coordinator we thank her so much for her cooperation to promote quality in our institutional activities dev prasad mondol tisas council secretary onupama maitro academic in charge and pali das nac coordinator of our college all have good enthusiasm and support for improvement of the academic environment we thank them very sincerely yes we equally do believe that teachers and researchers and participants at home and abroad having interest in this topic will be benefited from their participation in this webinar thank you all thank you so much nilima go on thank you so much thank you so much uh, thank you for your kind words and now i would like to request uh, professor anjini guho to say few words uh, good afternoon on behalf of the iqac uh, gmsm mahavidyalay i extend a warm welcome to our esteemed speaker of the day dr ashok dash to this international yes. webinar organized by the department of mathematics i also extend a warm welcome to all my colleagues participants and students who are uh, joining in this webinar i'm so happy that my college located in a village uh, bordering sundarbans is being connected to an international institute of such repute in france i think this is the magic of academics and uh, modern day technology thanks once again dr dash for taking your uh, valuable time for this small college uh, though this is a i feel this is an interdisciplinary subject but uh, since this is organized by the department of maths maths is a particular subject that is that can be at one hand very specialized and on, on the other hand it is one of the most everyday subjects that we need a child's first lessons are always in maths and language so maths in all forms are needed by everyone 
and every day so i think this is one of the most important subjects a backbone of so many other subjects so i congratulate the department the convener of this uh, seminar dr neelima dash and also the departmental head a very dynamic young professor and the and all other members of the department of mathematics for such a great endeavor i uh, i'm also very happy for the students uh, and students are should also be ha so happy that you all are being connected to such a reputed scholar and to such a reputed institution through the endeavor of your departmental teachers i think um, you all uh, deserve a good clap for the department and uh, i wish the seminar a, a webinar a success thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you so much so without any further delay let's welcome our speaker dr ashok das for uh, delivering his lecture and i hope you all enjoy his lecture please stay with us thank you good afternoon everyone at uh, first i'd like to thank uh, especially the principal professor hasan as well as dr nilimada head of the department of mathematics and other organizing committee members for inviting me and introducing me to the audience uh i think the most of the audience are from the mathematics department students and maybe some other departments too and i hope all of them are at the start of their undergraduate courses so i'd like to keep my presentation at least the introduction part a bit informal so that everyone can understand a bit of the thing and since it's kind of interdisciplinary topic so i think other persons can also think and try to learn try to understand what's happening here so with that thing i would like to start my presentation so is the screen uh, visible Anyone? yes it is visible okay okay at the start i would like to mention that uh, so if you have any kind of questions so you can ask me anything so that's the main question so that's the main thing that we should focus on at least this for the students that you should get inspired or at least get an interest of doing further in higher studies and research in future so you can ask anything you can ask about anything that's the main thing so with that i'd like to Uh, start my presentation on the chemical heterogeneity of non metallic inclusions in steel making with a multivariate population balance modeling so and as you can see these are very big words here but we'll try to generalize and we'll try to introduce each of them to you so that you can understand and as they have spoken so i am also dr ashok das and currently working as a post doctoral researcher at the institute jolemo of university de lorry and currently i'm staying in france so and now i'll start to present the outline of my presentation so we'll start with the introduction of the topic then we'll show you i'll show you the mathematical model that i have used for this and then the corresponding results and we'll discuss about that and finally we'll summarize so the production of particulate matters is very important in several industries such as food industry chemical industry um, uh, uh, crystallization industry or maybe some planetary researches as well for example let me once again okay so for example this is a uh, industrial level mechanism for granulation so which is used uh, mainly in food industries pharma industries etc where these are used to uh, formulate different shapes and sizes of coffee machines coffee so that we can use them for different types of processes or we can make tablets so that uh, we can use them also it is also used in the plastic industry so that we can uh, formulate plastics in our in the needed form and we can use that later for other processes also we can use those to form salt or different types of crystals which are very useful in pharmaceutical industries also particles can be uh, this type of processes can be thought of as planetary studies as well where planets collide and they break or they collide and aggregate together so so particles are present everywhere in this universe we need to see them accordingly 
so the ranges of particles for this study can be from very small particles of micrometer or nanometer scale to very large particles such as planets which are of which are of radius thousands of kilometers etc so the range of the study is very high now we have to decide which of the part we should focus on so for this work i have focused on the smaller particles and during this particle mechanisms in general we see different types of particle uh, interactions out, out of which the, these four are the most important mechanisms so the first one is the aggregation of particles where two smaller particles collide and they join together to make a bigger one for example if two solid particles join they form like this aggregate and if two liquid drops for example two raindrops they coagulate then they coagulate to make a bigger particle also we can have breakage of particles where one particle big particle breaks into smaller fragments also we can have in processes like crystallization and other processes we can have non -part particulate matters which are dissolved in the system and then they uh, form a small nuclei for the first time which is called a nucleation process also for a particle non particulate matters land on the surfaces of the particles and let the particles grow so that is called a growth nucleation growth mechanism so these are the main important mechanisms out of which for this study we'll only concentrate on the aggregation of particles and we'll apply that industrial process which we'll discuss now so in this work we have used a material science pro, uh, system where we are tracking the uh, steel making process so as you know this is a uh, steel making is a big industry uh, worldwide and we have big ladles in the industries to make steel and uh, and for other processes so for example in general in industry a simple ladle is the size of a simple ladle is around 50 to 150 tons and the temperature within the ladle is generally around 1500 degrees to 2000 degrees so you can see it's a high temperature process so during these processes the steel is melted and is, is in its liquid form and during this process due to this high temperature different types of gases oxygen especially and nitrogen they are dissolved in the system in the liquid metal form so when after the process the steel is solidified in its final form so due to these dissolved gases when they come in form they might create um, fatigue in the system which creates problem or which affects the effective of the metal so for that what researchers do they, they add different types of oxides into the system so that those gases chemically react with those oxygen and nitrogen gases and make non-metallic inclusions which are very small in size and then they try to uh, extract those non metals from the liquid steel so that they can get purer form of purest form of steel. So, however, this is a very difficult process to extract those small uh, large number in the so in the cubic meter of system we can have inclusions of number of fifteen. So it's a very huge problem in the industry and people are trying to solve that. And we are trying to model one part of it. So this is a general schema of steel gas tiered level where we have here and we have crystal inside. So one carbon gas so that all the good uh, this process, so we can have different types of non metallic inclusions in the system. For example, you can see here we have alumina, we can have manganese, ferrous oxide, and they are of different sizes and shapes. So it is important for the researchers to know what are their shapes and sizes and their properties so that they can work accordingly. And if they are still present in the system, they create, for example, you can see. These are some same images of uh, steel after production. And you can see due to the presence of this non-metallic inclusion, that is when you call in sort NMIs, they form these fatigues, which are bad for the 
still health so it's important to track the inclusions and their presence inside so for that we need to understand what, what are the processes that are happening inside with the inclusions so for that this is a general uh, uh, ladle so here we can see the main mechanism that is the aggregation of the inclusions to create bigger inclusions also you can see it is very uh, that density of liquid steel is very high compared to those non metallic inclusions right so the metal non metallic inclusions they float in the up direction with the bubbles so that they get, get upper and get out of the system also we can see sedimentation of those non metallic inclusions so that they can go outside of the system and finally we have small amount of capture at the top layer where the part non metallic inclusions go to the top layer due to the, the turboporosis effect or for example they try to go to the diff, uh, lower turbulent zone so what are our objectives of this course of this work so we want to track different mechanical and chemical compositions of those inclusions for example in a system we can have alumina we can have silica we can have manganese oxide etc and we are now trying to track each individual component of those inclusions and we'll try to track the evolution of those compositions through aggregation and other mechanisms and for that we'll use one mathematical method modeling method that is named as multivariate population balance model so this is the overall introduction so i'll just summarize once again so we have a liquid still process where we have liquid still in the system and we have dissolved oxygen in order to uh, in order to remove those we add oxide particles so um, non metallic particles inside which create non metallic inclusions and now our main aim is to model and track those inclusions in the system for that we will use the population balance model which uses this equation as a governing equation so for the students so you might have learned um, dynamics as well particle dynamics so there we have equations right where we write uh, if physical problem into a mathematical formulation and then we try to solve those problems and get some estimate of the physical phenomena so similarly we can have a population balance equation here so it looks a bit difficult but i'll try to make you understand so here this n is called the number density function so what the number density function denotes it denotes the density of a part inclusions of size of this value in the system so it is the number density function and we try to check the name the change in this number density function throughout the time so here on the right hand side how this uh, how that number density function is changing so this part is due to the change due to aggregation process for example the first term is the birth due to aggregation that means for example we have two inclusions of size v and y they are v minus y and y and they are colliding and aggregating to create a new particle of size v right so it is a it is the denotion of that process so for example here again so here v and y are colliding and aggregating so the concentration of size v is reducing so this is a death term due to aggregation similarly we can have flotation terms we can have sedimentation term as well as we can have capture terms which will we will show in the later parts so uh, for the brief again so we have a property vector v which is a vector form v1 v2 vd since it's a multivariate model so what is this so for example let's say we have inclusions of this type where we have different type two different types of chemical compositions v1 and v2 with total volume v1 plus v2 so in that case for this this inclusion particle will write its property vector at, as a vector of v1 and v2 then we write the corresponding number density function and this beta is called the aggregation kernel which denotes the rate of aggregation between different size classes now the main important part is to define or develop the these kernels so that we can use uh, uh, the so that we can model the uh, physical process in hand mathematically and we can solve the equations to get good results so for that we need to understand the physics of the model as well so for example at first we try to model the aggregation kernel 
So for example, we have aggregation like this for two smaller particles aggregating to form a bigger particle. Then the aggregation kernel will be dependent on the processes we are working on. So for example, right now the particles are flowing in the inside the system. So we have to see the flow of the particles. So for example, we have now two types of flow of the particles. So first type of flow is the sedimentation. Since the density of the particles is very low compared to the liquid steel, so they are going upwards. So you can see that both particles I and J are going upward direction. And if the velocity of this particle is higher compared to this one, then after some time they will, uh, and they are if inside this region, they will collide and they may aggregate to form a bigger particle, right? So for that particle in the literature, we have uh, a def defined a kernel for that. So we can write the collision kernel in this form where this is the area of collision region, which is this area. So this area defines the area where the, if two particles come, then they will collide. And this is denotes the relative sedimentation velocity. So for example, we have two sedimentation velocities. And if the sedimentation velocity of this particle is higher compared to this one, then they might uh, collide and aggregate accordingly, right? So this gives us the overall collision frequency of due to sedimentation mechanism. Also, since the, the particles are flowing in the system and we are passing the argon gas throughout the system, so we can have turbulent motion of inside the system as well. So for that, we can have turbulent motion of particles. And corresponding, we can write a collision rate due to turbulent motion, this one, which is a bit difficult to understand. So I am not explaining that one here. So finally, we have an aggregation kernel of this form where we have considered the sedimentation flow of the particles as well as the turbulent flow of the particles as well. Then now we have a flotation of particles where this bubble, argon bubbles are flowing through the system and smaller non-metallic inclusions are, uh, uh, are attaching on the surface of the uh, bubble and they are going upwards, right? So for that, we can also write in a similar formulation and we can write the collision due to sedimentation between bubble and inclusion in this form, as well as the collision due to turbulence motion. So these are the corresponding equations. So these are a bit difficult to understand for a new person, but I am just expressing you this so that you can at, at least get an idea of what's happening. Then we have a sedimentation where the due to the de uh, differential density, the particles go upwards. So that formula is very simple and straightforward. straightforward. So you can write this sedimentation velocity in this formulation. Also, due to the Brownian motion of particles and turboporosis effect, we can also have a capture rate of the particles at the top layer. So what is the turboporosis effect? Since inside the system, there is turbulence in the motion, right? So it is a natural tendency of every particle that they want to go to a more stable zone or lesser turbulence zone. So for that, they want to always shift to a part where the slag is there. So there the turbulence is less. So particles try to go there and they go out of the system. So this is given in this form. So with those data, we can now have a population balance equation, which is multi-D, which is very difficult to solve. Now we have to try to solve that equation. Now, how to solve this equation? So uh, most of you may know about a, a process that for example, if you have a differential equations, we, if we can, we can solve it analytically. And if we cannot solve it analytically, we try to do it with different numerical techniques, right? For example, you can have a finite discretization method to solve numerical uh, differential equations or integral equations. So similar, but a bit, a bit updated method is we have used, which is called a finite volume scheme. So for example, we have region. So we, discretize this, this whole region into small class whole region is discretize into small classes and we consider that the all the particles within this class is concentrated on the center of the, the pivot of the cell right and we discretize the whole domain accordingly so in that case we have properties for cells and we have different cells so for a cell of this type i cell we can have volume coordinates with different components we can have a total inclusion volume of that cell. Also, the composition coordinates.
according so with those data we can now so now for is the problem aggregating two parts so for example we have a particle of size vi and vj now for example the, if the aggregate they create a bigger size particle and they make create a new aggregate of this size vi plus vj but we have due to this difference uh, due to this discretization method we have already considered a cell with pivot at the median point right Medi median point but that may not be equal to the value vi plus vj for that if we just discretize and solve the equations it will give us an error or a bad approximation of the data so for that we need to somehow uh, rediscretize or redistribute the equations accordingly so that we can have a good approximation of the data so for that we do some reapproximations and we get a final form of the data so for example this is the aggregation mechanism uh, equation popul the population balance equation then we uh, de develop the equation update the equation into co composition form while multiplying both sides by v and then again we discretize and add some weighted functions in the equation so that we get those approximations with better accuracy so we get this equation so for example if we have a discretization of i cells and if we have we are working on a d dimensional problem for example we have d types of chemical composition so for that we now have a ultimately we now have a system of ods with i times d number of equations so for example if we have a discretization of 10000 number of cells and we have five dimensions so do we have then we have to solve 550000 ods at, uh, at the same time to get our system results so this is huge in number and as you working on an industrial scale it gets even it goes even further so the computational cost is very high but for now we are working on a simulation model so we will work with a smaller simple so this is the model we have developed i'm not going into the details of this model so it will be a bit tricky for that presentation so we'll now discuss about the advantages of this model so it does conserve the individual property masses what does it mean it means that when two particles are aggregating they will so for example we have two particles of size for example x and y and they are aggregating so physically what should be the size of the uh, new aggregate it should be x plus y right but when we numerically discretize it may not always conserve that property so so when parties aggregate means that the number of particles in the system reduces corresponding right for example if we have two particles and they are aggregating they are creating one new particle so we have from two particles we have now one particle so this is also a, a important property to track in the system so this method is developed in such a way that it conserves the individual property masses as well as preserves the evolution of total number of inclusions in the system so with those data we have some further modifications i think we'll try to skip those now we have we'll discuss the results so what we have we have a problem industrial scale problem we tried to model that with mathematical equations and then we tried to develop one mathematical numerical scheme to solve that mathematical model. Now, what is the aim? So we have to check whether the developed model is correct or not, right? So for that, what we need to do? We need to have some in, uh, previous data, experimental data or something, and what which for, with which we will try to uh, measure and rep, uh, compare the, result, the simulation results. So that we can say that our uh, model is this much good or that much bad, etc. Right? For for this purpose, we have considered the experimental data results from the work of uh, Professor Bilton, which they call a CDEN project uh, from the government of France, where they have tried different things in the real property. So we have of 
with initial nmi content of 0.176 kg per meter cube also they have considered that the initial uh, inclusion population has a log normal distribution of this kind and for that since uh, it was done in i think 2007 or 8 or something so they have considered only a univariate system that means that in during that time uh, their experiment did not capture the chemical heterogeneity of the uh, particles so they have considered only the size of the chemical uh, particles uh, size of the particles so we'll try to compare our results with their results right now first so for that at first we started with 20 number of discretizations and we solved and then you can see the results for 20 discretization this new method and the old method is although they are uh, good but they are not very good correspondingly right so you can see a gap between the results so for that now we try to increase the discretizations so when we increase the discretization up to 40 so you can see the results are now quite good for the result 40 discretization so now for example if we just increase the discretization more so we can have a better accuracy of the results right but there's a catch so if when you try to increase the discretization it will always take more time to solve right so for example in that case so when you try to increase the accuracy you will always increase the computational time as well so our main what should be our aim our aim should be a balance between the computational accuracy as well as the computational efficiency as well right so with that we try to check the error in the made up model as well as the simulation time so we did consider 20 40 60 and other number of pivot cells and we considered the errors correspondingly and we have compared the simulation time as well so for example you can see that for the old method the times and the new method times for 20 and 40 are almost same but the new method is still fast but for the higher number of pivots the old method takes large amount of time and the new method still takes a very small amount of time and gives us good accurate results the accuracy is this much of percentage so this is very good results right but it's it's the new method is still faster compared to the old ones so with this data we can say that we can consider a 40 discretization uh, which is gives us good accurate result as well as which is fast as well so with this data we have considered different further results one second okay so now we'll try to see the effect of each uh, different mechanisms that we have considered in the model and we try to plot that also so for example we can see the aggregation uh, the effect of aggregation is plotted here which is giving us good results from the uh, previous experimental result and the new model results uh, and which is good accuracy with good accuracy and other models such as capture such as sedimentation flotation is also matching uh, is the results corresponding to those methods are also matching uh, but we can see the effect of aggregation is highest compared to the other method for example these are in log scale so the value is uh, uh, 10 to the power 2 means 100 frequency but here it's 10 to the power 5 or 6 so that means the aggregation the effect of aggregation is very high compared to other mechanism also the elimination rate of particles due to those other mechanism those sedimenting mechanism you can see that they are also matching with the uh, previous result and we can say that the capture uh, we can say that the flotation is the uh, most effective method here then now with those data we have validated our method and we have shown that the our method is accurate enough to capture the previous results now we'll try to produce some new results which are interesting for the readers right so for that we consider now a bivariate distribution for example instead of having only considering the size of the uh, particles we now consider their chemical heterogeneity for example initially we may have two different types of chemical compositions of pure in the purest form for example we can have the uh, alumina and we can have silica which are in pure form and then du during the process they mix together and they create newer particles so we want to track 
their population inside the system so for example initially we have two uh, initial compositions in the pure form and with time they will grow and aggregate together in this median zone and we'll try to track those results so for that we have considered two different types of cases we considered 50 percent of composition one and 50 percent of composition two and one other case is that 80 percent and 20 percent of those compositions so one interesting part of this consideration was that when you suppress or project that to one dimensional form so that means when you just discard the chemical compositions these are exactly same for 1d case but when you see in 2d then you get different perspectives of the process so with those data now we compared the we have produced the results and we are comparing those results for different cases and you can see that those results when you project that to one dimension the volume density distribution with respect to diameter is exactly same for all the cases that means we are getting at least we, we know that our method is uh, good and gives accurate results and we can also see that the number of evolution of number of inclusions in the system which is reducing due to aggregation and which is also predicted correctly Furthermore, we can see that uh, the total mass of the system since due to aggregation and due to those elimination processes the mass of those inclusions also reduced in the system so you can see that they are also decreasing and if we check the different composition masses we can see that for the case one where 50 50 percent of particles are there we can see that both compositions are almost same throughout the simulation and for 80 and 20 we can see different values with a ratio of 80 and 20 throughout the simulation which is giving us good results as well now interesting uh, results are here so for example this is the 50 50 case so we have introduced only pure particles along these edges right now when they aggregate together so we may expect that more part after some time we will get more particles with 50 percent around 50 percent of c1 and 50 percent of c2 right so we can see after 300 seconds of process we can see this distribution of particles where most of the particles are distributed among this region which is the region where particles have equal amount of both compositions which is expected right so in science, uh, for the students, in science, when you try to model something, it is always important to show and predict the usual, which is obvious. We should pro always try to reproduce those results. So if you can do that, you can show that your model is correct and you can uh, you can uh, discuss other dis uh, different things. And for example, for the se second case, when we have 80 and 20% of cases. So for example, here you can see after 300 seconds of process, now more particles are trying to concentrate around this region which is where we have more of composition 2 than composition 1 so this due to, due to this results we can predict we can predict that so if we start with more of composition uh, one composition then after some time in the particles we will get more of that composition which is very we should get so we can predict those results with those data and we have also got several other results which i am not uh, discussing here okay we have one more data so i have now plotted the time evolution of mass percentage of different types of inclusions for example initially we have all 100 percent of pure inclusions right and with time they are aggregating and they are becoming mixed so they are the pure percent uh, percentage of pure inclusions are reducing with time right and at the same time for the first case 50 50 case we are seeing that the particles with 50 50 type of particles are increasing with time and on the other case when we have 80 percent at 20 percent of in at the initial start initial time we can see with time this 80 20 percent of particles are increasing in percentage mass percentage where 50 50 are staying almost same so this is also a good prediction of the results which we should expect so with those data now we'll try to summarize the problem so what we did we have a, li a liquid steel making process where we have small inclusions in the system which you need to track for the pro betterment of the steel making process so with that model we have developed a multivariate population balance model which is new uh, compared compared to the previous 
research area where people used to consider only one uh, univariate processes. So instead, instead we have considered a multivariate model, and we have developed correspondingly the new medical method to solve this problem. And we have at first reproduced the univariate serum results, which are published previously. And we have found that the new method is computationally more efficient, as well as we can generalize the results to any dimension now. So we have shown the only two for two dimension, but it can be generalized up to any dimension. Also, we have seen that the heterogeneous population of inclusions are evolving with time, and we have shown their we have seen their evolution with time, right? And we have also investigated the kinetics of evolution of multivariate the of population of those inclusions. And in future, what can be done? So in every kind of research work, you have to have some future scope so that either you or the researchers which who will come later, for example, some of you may get interested with this idea and at the later stage of your career, you may research on this area and you can, what you can do. So for that, I need to present that, that to you as well. You so check the chemical impact of chemical on the aggregation kernel and efficiency. For example, right now we have considered that alumina and silica, they have equal efficiency to get collated and aggregated. This may not be true for a process, right? They may have different types of efficiency. Also, you can add, uh, for example, right now we haven't considered the morphology or the shape of the particles right now. So you can add uh, a morphological factor into the equation, which will make the system more difficult and complex, but that will give you better approximation of the data. Then we can also, you can also, someone can also add a uh, CFD, the compression of fluid or better prediction of the particle dynamics. Also, you can add reaction of the liquid phase with the particle phase, right, in the, into the models. So with those things can be done in, uh, in the future. Uh, so with this thing, I want to thank everyone for your attention and listening to this long and boring presentation, maybe. So this is my email address. If anyone wants to connect with me anytime, they can mail me and get in touch. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Das. And thank you for yes. being such a lovely audience. And uh, thank you for your cooperation. Now, if you have any questions yes, and queries, you may ask to Dr. Das. Yes, you can ask any questions. It's not a problem. Students, please. I'm sure that you all have okay, benefited uh, from this lecture. And you have some idea of future research. And please ask. You have in many questions in your mind. Please ask. We have been the students for before. I'm a Jani Jerakum student, so I'm going to go to China, but I'm going to go to China. Bangladesh is going to go to China. No problem. Yes, yes. You are always welcome in any language. I know he knows uh, English, Hindi, Bangla, Bengali, and <laughs> I don't know. I'm a bit of French too. French, French too. <laughs> So you may ask in any language. So I think they don't have any question. So if you don't, if they don't have any question, then let us conclude this one day international webinar. Yes, uh, Dr. Asim Das. Uh, yes. Sir, yes, sir, please. Uh, you presented uh, the topic uh, in a magnificent way. Mm. Thank you. Very many thanks. But I am from uh, other field. My subject mm. is philosophy. Uh, okay. But mm, it's very difficult to understand uh, the topic uh, mm -hmm. about which you discussed. But one uh, simple question. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. so what are the types of non-inclusion? Okay. Types of inclusions mean that inclusions in the field of steel making is called the small particles those are those are included in the system but which are unnecessary for the process so those are called inclusions and they have they may have may uh, be of different types for example different types in the in in thought of their chemical composition for example they may be alumina they may be silica they may be manganese they may be some other kinds of things and they have different types of 
properties and they have different types of uh, their uh, melting points so those are all important in the system for example tata steel is making steel and they want, so if they don't extract those uh, inclusions from the system so it is very difficult for them to produce a high performance metal so so they it is important for them but now they are uh, ma mainly focusing on this type of projects and they are giving different projects to different pro pro parties so that they can work on these things and they can give us give the we can give them better models so that they can work with that so this is important for them anyone thanks thank you have a good day have a good day thank, thank you. you thank you very much thank you everyone uh, let's let us thank uh, our speaker once again and uh, I'll, i would like to extend also thank to our principal sir dr aj hasan and last but not the least i would like to extend my thanks to our organizing committee mr shubhajit kumar uh, mr shaddam hosen uh, mr shomoris pramanik and uh, dr amit kumar maji and have a great day thank you thank you thank you